Hi, and welcome back to this, the 24th episode of my modification, overhaul, repair, CNC conversion of this uh, variable speed 7x12 mini lathe. I really appreciate all the comments you guys give me and the encouragement. It's sometimes not that easy to keep up the motivation on such a long project as this. And in fact, once I saw that uh, our number one fan, Nico, was leaving town and was going to be outside the range of my internet, I did consider just slacking off this week, I must say. Another thing which has slowed me down a lot on this project for the last few weeks has been working in parallel on fixing a leaky shower basin. As you know, I'd been having difficulties with the um, Linux installation and that, that one old uh, PC that I'm using tended to want to freeze up. I was having problems with it just constantly. Every two or three minutes after I booted it, it would freeze up or seize up. So anyway, I, uh, I went on the internet, of course, and looked up, the, uh, looked up some reasons why machines seize up. And of course, what I found is most seizures are caused either by a lack of lubrication or overheating. So let's, let's address that first. Well, to address the uh, lack of lubrication, the most obvious moving part would be the solid state hard drive. So luckily they've got these oil holes on the side, so I'll give those a quick oiling. There we go. So that should improve the uh, that hard drive. Now the next cause of seizure that we've got to address is overheating. You know, I was reading on the internet, often when mechanical parts overheat like this, the, uh, the rings nip up and then they seize. So I was having a look in this and it looks like most of the, the heat's probably coming from the middle there, which I, th where I think the, the processor is. So what we'll do is put a couple of holes in here to, to let the heat out. Huh? That should do it. So after addressing the overheating issues and installing uh, Linux Mint, it's now running perfectly. It doesn't seem to, to lock up anymore. The next thing I need to do is connect the 5 volt power supply to power the Mesa card. And so before I start connecting power, just let me shut down the computer. Oops. The touchscreen works fine, I just had it plugged into itself. What I've done is the touch interface comes out as a USB cable and I just packed it in the, the interface card I guess for the HDMI input, but that needs to go directly to the PC. One of the nice things about these Mesa cards is they have these removable, I think they're called Waco plugs aren't they? So. It's nice and easy to uh, populate the board and then just dis disconnect things for putting it into the control cabinet. Just unplug it, plug it back in. This is now the first power on of the Mesa card. Well, following uh, Dead.io's excellent uh, setup video, I'll mount a link in the top right, I've managed to get connection now with the uh, Mesa board. To do that, I had to edit the uh, network. I think it was right. Yeah, the, this wired connection. It set its IP4 to an um, IP address as, as Dead.io said, 10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. 11 with that network mask and gateway, saved that. I had to move the jumper uh, W6 into the up position, leaving W5 in the lower position. That then defaults to the EEPROM's internal fixed IP address of 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. Um, now, now that I've rebooted it, I can ping it.
and have a valid connection. So that's good. Another little milestone. There's probably a command to stop this ping, but I don't know how, so I just kill it. Next, I need to and flash that with a different firmware because standard it's set up to do um, step direction outputs, but I want to convert one of the step direction outputs into a pulse width modulation output to drive this little little adapter card, which will then control the frequency of the VFD. What I need to do is download the Mesa Flash tool. I need to navigate to MesaNet. They always have the supporting software on the same page as the card. So we'll just save that. So in the downloads folder, there's that zip file I just downloaded. I've ex um, extracted it like this. And the file that we need to flash is this one, one pulse width modulation bit. If we go into my thread for this project, you see here on page page 14, here's the command we need to write this to the to the Mesa card. From in here, I'll open a terminal window and paste that command but we have to overwrite the IP address And to, now we need to do the same command again, but with reload. Okay, so that's the correct firmware now installed on our Mesa card. The next thing we're going to do is use a program called PNC Configure which is a standard part of the Linux CNC load to configure our HAL file and any file. So this is the program here. We'll go to start. Let's create a new configuration. We do want to have a shortcut, a desktop link. We want a uh, launcher. I'm not sure what that means, but let's just set it. And we'll leave the advanced options for now. So I'm going to call our machine mini lathe. It's a lathe. It's metric. Now, when you're using a Mesa card, you want to keep this as a million nanoseconds for the, for the servo period. So we'll keep that. I won't bother testing the jitter. We've already tested that. It's not fantastic, but should work. We have a single Mesa Ethernet card. I'm not using any parallel port cards. I do not require homing because I don't have any indexing switches on this machine. Manual tool change prompt, let's leave that in. Spindle, leave the spindle on. Nah, that's not a good, good idea. We don't need manual homing. We don't need to move the spindle up. Don't know what that does and that's not relevant to us. Now the next thing is which interface do we want? I really like the Gmocker Pi touchscreen interface. It's fantastic. Recommend it to anybody. Relative or machine. Let's show it the launch into the relative offsets. Position feedback commanded or actual. We want the actual to show the actual position. The display geometry is going to be just XZ. Spindle override, I'll leave all that standard. Next up, I don't need any virtual control panels. So here we go, which board am I using? I'm using the 7i96. The board's address is 10.10.10.10. I'm going to want one encoder, that's going to be the spindle encoder. 
I'm going to want one pulse width modulation generator for the spindle speed and I'm going to want two step generators for the two axes. Number of smart serial ports, I'll just leave that as one. Total number of pins, so I'll just keep that as it is. It now sets up the, the, t the actual pins that are available. This is just general I.O. For example, the spindle. We want a spindle clockwise pin. And we want a spindle anti-clockwise pin. The next thing we want, the first um, step generator we're going to use for a main axis, which will do the X axis, and the second one will do the Z axis. We have one encoder, that's going to be the spindle encoder. I don't have anything on P1, P1 is the expansion port if I want to run a second card, for example, I don't know if I was going to run linear encoders into the machine, maybe I'd use that. Not sure what I need to do to get my pulse width modulation output, but we'll leave that from now and go ahead. Here we've got our X axis. Looking in the user manual for my drivers, they have a minimum dwell time between any change of state of two microseconds, so 2000 nanoseconds. I'm just going to leave it at 5000, a bit more conservative. If I find I'm running up against um, speed limits for the machine, I could just go in here and reduce this down. Okay, following errors, I'll just leave them as they are. So, next up, we have the encoder scale. There's a nice little widget to help you there. I'm using pulleys. They're 2 to 1, or in this case, 24 to 48 tooth pulleys. There's no worm gear in between. My drives can go up to 20 times micro-stepping, so I'll use that. The x axis is a 3mm lead screw, 3mm pitch, and it's a 200 step stepper motor, which is kind of normal. Stepper maximum acceleration, I'll leave that, leave that as it is. That can be tested and adjusted later. Next one, where is our positive travel direction? So fully out on the cross slide must be something like 120 millimeters. Uh, negative, I'll do, I'll leave it at zero. There is no home position, but we'll call it 120. I do need to use backlash compensation because I'm not using zero backlash ball screws. I'm going to set this as a start for, let's say, 0.25 of a millimeter and move on to the Z axis once again, same again. By the way, you can select a driver type, but in my case, the um, ZMX drivers from Fytron are not in the list, so leave that. Now in this case, once again, we've got our 24 teeth driving a 48 tooth reduction. No worm. Once again, we're micro-stepping. Here we've actually got a, an imperial lead screw, but it comes out as 5.08 millimeters per revolution. And once again, a 200 uh, step per revolution driver. Moving on. So in the Z axis, our positive limit, the pedstop stop will call it zero. It can move to minus 300 millimeters down to the tailstock end. And the home position will put it about minus 150, about in the middle. Once again, there's no homing. I will need backlash compensation because this is a cheap and nasty low quality ball screw that's not activating, but I can always add that in the in the any file manually. Spindle motor, calculate the scale. So our pulley, it's not a tooth pulley, there'll be some slip to it, but it's about 50 millimeters driving about 46 millimeters. It's a slight overdrive. We then go through a choice of two gear ratios. The low ratio is 18 teeth driving 43 teeth and in high ratio 30 teeth driving 31 teeth. The motor RPM is 2715 according to its nameplate that requires 10 volts to get to that speed. We can't use a negative voltage for reversing we have to use uh, different 
pins for reversing this, the uh, direction of the motor. We have 100 lines per revolution times 4 quadrature gives us 400 pulses per, uh, per revolution. Okay, that gives us our encoder scale. I'll leave that for now. Okay, now it's been configured. So it's now put a launcher on the main screen for us. Okay, it's obviously a standard feature of um, GMOC Pi that for a lathe mode you it shows both radius and, and diameter constantly. Step gen, two bit for current, step timings. Okay, I'll have to look into that later. Error there. We can home the, home the machine without actually doing anything. Okay, so now we have a, a finished configuration. The next thing I'm going to need to do is to get in and start wiring up all of the control signals to the VFD, to the stepper motors, uh, to the spindle encoder, etc. But I think I'm going to leave that here for this week and upload this video. Once again, thanks very much for watching. If you like what you see, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and especially appreciate if you recommend this to one of your friends. And if you don't like what you see, please hit the thumbs down button two times to really show your displeasure.